Yeah. What do you think about the, um, the aesthetic value or the difference between the aesthetics between Greece 1 and Greece 2? Because I found that Greece, Greece 2 was much, it was sort of fluffier, it was more beautiful, it was yeah. sort of like, a, it was more vibrant with the colors and stuff like that, and I liked it a lot more because of that fact. Right. I, find it, I found it more beautiful. Well, it's more true, it's more true to actually its era that it's supposed to be. Yeah. Remember when, when Olivia Newton-John comes out as, as Slutty Sandy at the mm. end of, yeah. of Greece 1. She's not dressed like it's 1961. Mm. She's, you know, with the curled hair and everything, she looks like a disco chick from no. 1977. Mm. You know, Greece 2 actually, the people look like they're from the 60s mm. the whole time, no. for good or bad. No. The music isn't necessarily early 60s music. No. That's a lot better in Greece 1 in terms keeping mm. the music to the period. But Greece 2 is very true to the period, no. uh, visually. So what yeah. do you think it's set in the 60s? It was made in the 80s, right? Greece 2 was, but Greece 2 happens, it takes place one year after Greece. Oh, okay, so, okay. Now, Greece came out, uh, you know, the, the musical came out in the early 70s when there was that 50s revival, and mm. Sha Na Na were really big. That's why they're the band in, in, in the, you know, the dance competition mm. in Greece. Um, they played at Woodstock, you know, Sha Na Na, Woodstock. Really? You, know, you don't think that, you think Woodstock was all hippies bands, but no, Sha Na Na played at Woodstock doing their 50s cover songs. That cool. was it. Yeah. Oh. So, it was just, you know, that 15-year retro thing. Interestingly enough, um, John Travolta and Jeff Conway, uh, Danny Zuko and, and Kanicki, had both done Grease before yeah. with each other in the same production, but with reversed roles. Cool. Yeah. So John Travolta was Kanicki and Jeff Conway was Danny yeah. Zuko. Which yeah. I think I'd like to see that actually. You know? Yeah, they, they did a they did a stage thing on that as yeah. well. Um, the thing was that it, there was also some controversy within it, within the within Greece One because there's this one song that's supposed to be Kaniki's number, the yes. one about the car. Yeah, Greece and, Lightning. And and Travolta sort of sort of hijacks it, yeah. and that was a producer's decision because okay. they thought that that Travolta was such an up and coming, and he was a good. He, he, the, He's I don't. Great he's yeah, great I, at what he does. I don't personally care for John Travolta that much, but uh, it's true that he is a great dancer and he has a he has a certain way of moving which really made the first movie much more than the second one because there wasn't there, there isn't that kind of magnetism mm. in yeah, the yeah, Adrian Smed doesn't yeah. quite have the magnetism <laughs> of a young Travolta. Now Travolta at the time, you know, he was a TV star. One yeah. of the you know a lot of people have trouble going from TV to movie star. Mm. You know, Michael J. Fox did it. Um, but a lot of people did not do yeah. it, you know. Uh, what's his name from uh, uh, from uh, CSI uh, Miami? What's his name? Uh, uh, Caruso. Yeah, 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 that yeah, that yeah. didn't work for him. No, <laughs> no, no, he, no. he did yeah. not make the shift. But um, valiant uh, well, effort. <laughs> well, yeah, the valiant effort. Yeah. Well, uh, Welcome Back Carter <laughs> was a sitcom from uh, the mid '70s, and it was. It, I watched a few of them recently on YouTube and stuff, and some of it's still really funny. And it was about this classroom full of delinquents, the, mm. the sweat hogs, they were mm. called. And John Travolta was Vinnie Barbarino. Yeah. And their teacher had been a sweat hog, you know, 10 years before. He had been a delinquent kid, mm. and now he's back. That's why it's Welcome Back, Cotter. Mm. Cotter. So, uh, but Travolta was huge. He was like 19 or 20 when he did that. Mm. And he became a big, he was the star of the show. He yeah. wasn't supposed to be, but he took over the show. Yeah. So. And he's really good from back then, too. Yeah. Uh, so it made perfect sense to, to really build this guy up. So this is the guy mm. that we no, want everybody no, to see. No. Although I liked Kaneki. I thought he was cool. Yeah, yeah. and it, it was a shame that what happened with Jeff gone away anyway, because his life didn't turn out well. Yeah, he did yeah. Taxi. What did he do after Taxi? The TV show not, taxi? Not, a lot of, not a lot of stuff. And then he created, he had, he had this back problem, and he got addicted to pain medication and died in 2011 of drug Prince. related <laughs> what that was prince yeah <laughs> yeah but 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 he he was in really i i saw some reality show where he was taking part in the end and he was in really bad shape yeah in in the end i mean he was really really you could see that he, he was walking like this and he was in constant pain oh, all oh, the time man. so so um but it, it's also the greece one was i i read an article about the production because the guy who produced it was this really high-flying Hollywood type yeah. um, who sort of created this this whole world for Greece. It was, it, it was basically, it was completely his movie. Oh. But it was a really, it, he did some really controversial choices. For, for example, uh, Sid Caesar, who plays the, the, the gym teacher, yeah, yeah. was originally, uh, Originally, it was it, the the role was cast for Harry Reams. No way. Yeah, Holy who was shit. A, who was a major seventies porn star. Mm. porn star, just just one of the biggest porn stars of yeah, that time. Yeah, after John Holmes, probably the biggest guy star. Yeah, 
Interesting choice. Yeah. Yeah. That would be <laughs> relevant. Cool. Yeah, the, and the production company says no way. But in terms of, uh, the, the, I, I also read, I think it was Roger Ebert's um, a review of Greece 2 back then. Yeah. And his problem was that Greece 1 was about class warfare basically yeah. that it was the it was the kids against the adults and it yeah. was the different different groups against each other and so on and he said that Greece the problem with Greece too is that there is no there is no opposition anymore mm. because when the when the the leader of the T-Birds um, or the music teacher tells the member of the T-Birds in Greece too that I'd like to see some um, all of you in 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 music yeah. appreciation and he has well, answers all of you yeah music appreciation. and she just sort of says that maybe you will so it's not it's not yeah. the teachers against the yeah. students anymore it's more of that everybody is sort of on the same side and that destroys the dynamic in right. his in in his view it's a and good point but in a way it's also an evol evolution of the um, evolution of the dynamic yeah. we were talking about the evolution of the morality in these two movies so it's the evolution of the dynamic between the kids and the adults, basically. Yeah. Well, also, in Greece 2, you know from the beginning how the movie's going to end. Mm -hmm. The first time you see Greece, you don't know what's going to You don't know that you're going to completely remake Olivia Newton-John into somebody, so that's a, a bit of a surprise, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's no surprising. You know when Michael starts learning the motorcycle, he's going to get really good, mm -hmm. and he's going to get the girl. Yeah. You know? So basically, yeah. I think that might be the reason why the kids rejected the idea, actually, the one that you just pointed out and the one that um, you pointed out, because... Um, the problem is that if it's too predictable and it doesn't have this sort of an opposing force and almost this sort of a morality that is sort of, let's say, slightly degenerate in a yeah. way, it's not appealing to young people, I think. Well, and also, you know, the bad guy, Craterface, mm -hmm. I love that name, <laughs> Leo, <laughs> as he's actually called, they don't call him Craterface. Now, in the Greeks one, you know, he's there. He's you, you know, he's established as the bad guy, mm. right? Uh, he makes fun of Kinecki and Rizzo, and then he's in the the race against uh, Travolta wins the mm. race. You know, so he's still the bad. He's actually a, a fairly major part. He only in the second part just there for the sake of saying, "Oh, look, we have a bad guy." Because mm. he doesn't ah, actually, you know, have his, an arc. Like, you know, yeah. at the end, of course, when his gang, you know, they crash the luau, mm. you know. But that that scene doesn't even need to happen because mm. yeah. you you know you don't have to beat Leo. It's yeah. never established that he's you know that bad guy. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's a lot of criticism about that last scene anyway because it's it basically turns the movie into complete shambles. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be there in terms of that, and it doesn't have to be there otherwise as well because it it it, it is just a chaotic end scene, and and the climax is sort of unsatisfying as well yeah. in a way because not nothing much happens. They they they. Ride their motorcycles through the Luau. And into the and, pool, basically. And, in, <laughs> and then they ride back and, 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 and the hero jumps the pool and the rest just don't. Drive into the pool. Yeah. Now, if I was in the gang and the hero jumped the pool and the first two or three guys of my gang drove into the pool, I would go around the pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything to prove, you know. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Uh. But it is, I mean, they also, in, in the first one, the... They were trying to get Henry Winkler for yeah. for Zuko okay. because he was, but he didn't want to do it because he'd already been in the Fonz. Yeah. But they would have known that that him being the Fonz, it would have created, you know, it it would have been a box office, a, a typical Hollywood decision Can you for imagine boxing. Imagine how he would have danced. Yeah. <laughs> so but Henry Winkler and Harry Reams in the same movie. <laughs> yeah. Pretty impressive, you know. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys seen a, a movie called uh, Velvet Goldmine? Uh, I did see Velvet Goldmine. Yeah, yeah. it was with I, Ewan McGregor. Yeah. 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 yeah and it was him. It. it was yeah. It took place in like the early seventies Bowie glamour. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I was thinking about that movie and comparing it to Greece and. I think that movie is probably for an older audience. Oh, totally. Like, yeah, yeah, like th that is something like a Greece for 20 year olds. Yeah, because you actually have to know the period. You know, you have to know a bit about the glam era yeah, the no. to, for the movie to make sense. Anybody can watch Greece and go, oh, it's the early, it's the late 50s, true, early true. 60s. That's you know? true. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 We should write plots for the next 10 Greases, you know, <laughs> we should. Oh, year Definitely. by year through the yeah. 60s and 70s. Yeah. Until the Greece to the future. Yeah. <laughs> Lube. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, Greece too, though, does have in one of the one of the better songs. Um, it does have possibly the worst rhyme, uh, the worst best rhyme 
in, in movie song history. And who's that guy? You know, when mm -hmm. Michael's riding around, he's got, you know, the black. Mm -hmm. And um, they're like, who's that guy on the black motorcycle? And he turns to the camera and he's just thinking, he goes, what would they say if they knew it was Michael? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's absolutely brilliant. That is, wow, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. Who's that Who's that guy? That's a good song. And Reproduction's a really good song. Who's that guy's a really good song. It does have the most atrocious movie song of all time, Behind the Charade. Uh, yeah. Michael's, you know, singing about Behind the Charade. I can't even remember most of that song. And I've seen Grease 2 at least 30 times in my life. Yeah. It's it's interesting that I think that it was in the Ebert review where he thought that that it had passable songs except for reproduction, which he thought was awful. Oh, I like reproduction. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Got your pistol right here. But reproduction is much more for kids. It's much more of like a grease song. It's yeah. not like it's. I think it. I think the 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 innuendo and the way it's sung really appeals to like someone who's twelve or thirteen years old, and which yeah. Roger Ebert was not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm not a huge Ebert fan, but I I I I sort of appreciate his, his life's work, and I know that he can he can w write about movies. I I tend to disagree with a lot of. With a lot of the stuff that he 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 says, but or writes, but or we're used to write, but um, but uh, that was one of the if I if I want to see a review from that from that era or any era basically yeah. in the last like thirty years, Ebert's usually my pick just because I know that there's going to be quality writing at least, oh, right, okay. good good points about about the movies, even though I might not. I just realized that. something about the, the moral thing that we said before about how Michael showed that if you work hard, mm. you can achieve your goals, you mm. can achieve your dreams. Um, it's not just him who does that. In fact, all of the T-Birds do that in Greece too. Mm. Remember the talent show, when they first uh, they howl and walk, talk like, mm. it. They, they can't dance, they mm. can't sing, and they, and they put it together and it's great at the actual talent show. They work hard and they achieve their goals. They win the records together with the, the Pink Ladies no. who also work hard and achieve their goals. So it's a very good moral. Yes. You know? And I do like that their song is, you know, if if you're hungry for a lover, got to find a girl who'll give you more. There's a place I've discovered where a guy's guaranteed to score, and that place where they go prowling is down at the grocery store. <laughs> Walk, talk, lack, like Really? Bird. Yeah. I <laughs> can't remember that, but that's yeah. basically day game. Yeah. The pickup artist yeah, day game. If you really game. want yeah. some action, the kind you never had before, a guaranteed satisfaction. Down at the grocery store, <laughs> oh, oh, we're going prowling. Walk, talk, like a T-bird. Prowling, walk. That's a good song. But well, I, that's, that's everybody's homework, is, is look up the uh, walk, talk like a T-bird <laughs> prowling song. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. It sounds really good, but about the moral thing, I, I, that is a good moral to abide by, that if you want to do that, go do it. But marriage would have been better than a grocery store. Yeah. 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 Then but these guys weren't married. Yeah, but you know, that's the place to go. Uh, and you know what? Since it is, that is such a strong moral, you know, work hard and you can achieve no. your goals, whether you're a T-bird or an Australian no. exchange student, that's the kind of moral that actually might turn off younger viewers. 12 and 13 so don't want to hear no, work no. hard and achieve your goals. No, no. They'd rather see dress like a slut and achieve your yeah, goals, no, you know? Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, yeah, there's no. not a lot of music videos that have that message that work hard and you can achieve your goals. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really happen that often. I mean, that's, that's more of an adult moral. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um,